Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another mighty episode of History of the Marvel Universe. Today's tale begins on the planet Corbin in the heart of a faraway galaxy. The Corbinites were a peaceful and prosperous people, with advanced alien technology, a strong military, and a rich culture of religious tradition. However, all of this was nearly destroyed when the enormously powerful fire demon Surtur came to their galaxy. The galactic core suddenly and unexpectedly exploded, and much of the Corbinite Empire was wiped out. Also, Surtur could begin forging his ultimate weapon, the Sword of Doom, the Twilight Sword. With their galaxy burning around them, the Corbinites prepared to flee their home, but they possessed not the resources to maintain their remaining population through an intergalactic voyage. To survive, they would need to place nearly the entirety of their species into cryogenic hibernation, but to leave themselves asleep and unguarded was far too dangerous. They decided to create a protector for themselves, and their first attempt at crafting a biomechanical being was dubbed the Alpha Ray. However, it turned out Alpha was too unstable and uncontrollable to be trusted with such an important task. It lacked the noble soul of a warrior, and so their second creation, the Beta Ray, was designed to house such a soul. To determine which of their people would give up their life to inhabit the cyborg body, a great contest was held among thousands of warriors. The tests were grueling, so physically demanding, so mentally taxing, they resulted in either madness or death for most who attempted them. In the end, one Corbinite survived the rigorous trials to become his people's champion his mind and soul transferred into the bioengineered frame to become Beta Ray Bill. Bill was given an AI-powered warship named the Scuttlebutt to act as both transportation and companion, and the two led their people out of the burning galaxy. But then, as the sleeping Corbinites made their exodus, scores of demons began pouring from the galactic core to give chase. Bill and Scuttlebutt met the demons head-on, drawing them away from the rest of the fleet as they pushed ahead in search of a new home. But as Scuttlebutt drew closer to the planet Earth, her presence was detected by S.H.I.E.L.D.'s deep space monitoring systems. Fearing the alien vessel posed a potential threat, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s director, Nick Fury, asked Thor, the god of thunder and one of Earth's mightiest defenders, to go into space and investigate. However, Thor hailed from the fabled land of Asgard, whereas Surtur's fire demons originated from Muspelheim, both of which were among the realms connected through the branches of Yggdrasil, the world tree. As a result, the magical energies of Thor and that of the demons appeared similar to Scuttlebutt's sensors, causing her to believe he was one of them, and opened fire. Tearing his way into the ship, the God of Thunder came face to face with Beta Ray Bill. The two noble opponents entered into a mighty, albeit misguided, battle, during which Thor was separated from his enchanted hammer, Mjolnir and the enchantment on the hammer, put there by Thor's father Odin to teach him humility, dictated several things. First off, only a truly noble spirit worthy of its power was capable of lifting the hammer. Secondly, any who could wield Mjolnir would gain the strength and powers of Thor himself. Third, the hammer would always return to its wielder upon being thrown, and finally, by stamping the hammer on the ground, it would be disguised as a simple walking cane, and Thor would transform into the frail doctor, Donald Blake. However, while on Earth, Thor would need to hold the hammer continually to retain his godly form, and being separated from it for a full minute would cause him to revert to his mortal guise. And so, as Scuttlebutt drew closer to the Earth, Thor, having been separated from Mjolnir for 60 seconds, lost his godly strength in the middle of the fight. Trapped in mortal form, Thor was easily defeated by Beta Ray Bill. 
damaged in the battle, Scuttlebutt crashed on Earth, and amid the wreckage, as the ship began repairing herself, Bill did something that only a handful of beings have ever been capable of. Beta Ray Bill lifted the Hammer of Thor, gaining all the thunderous powers it contained. Then, when Allfather Odin attempted to call his son back to Asgard, he mistakenly pulled Bill into the Golden Realm instead. Thinking he was among the enemies that threatened his people, Bill attempted to strike down the Allfather. However, as Mjolnir's creator, Odin was able to seize the hammer and cancel the assault, trapping Beta Ray Bill behind a wall of power until the truth could be determined. He then transported his son back to Asgard, where he regained his true form even without the hammer. Seeing the bond between father and son, Bill could only deduce that the two Asgardians were not demons, and likewise Bill's ability to wield Mjolnir proved to Thor and Odin that he was more than he appeared. And so introductions were made and Beta Ray Bill explained his plight. With the demonic hordes ever encroaching on the Corbinite convoy, Bill insisted that he keep the weapon he won in fair combat so that he might protect his people. However, the Allfather explained that the victory was not entirely fair, as it was Odin himself who was responsible for the enchantment that caused his son to drop to mortal form. A rematch was in order, and so Odin stripped both Thor and Bill of all enchantments and powers over lightning and thunder for the duration of the bout. The two were transported to the land of Skarthime for a fight to the death, where each combatant would rely solely on their strength and their cunning to achieve victory. The battle was close, but Odin had slyly chosen a fiery battlefield in which Bill had the slight advantage. Although Odin had declared this to be a death battle, when he and his unconscious opponent were floating down a river of lava atop a precarious rock headed towards a steep drop, Bill attempted to lift and rescue Thor. It seemed to be the end for both warriors, but before they could plummet down the flaming falls, Odin used his power to return Bill and Thor to Asgard. Both warriors were taken away to heal, and while Bill had proved victorious, he could not deny that Mjolnir was forged for Thor to wield. And so, rather than claim the hammer for himself, Beta Ray Bill humbly asked Allfather Odin for help. Odin agreed, for Bill had proven himself mighty and noble beyond compare. He had spared the life of Thor and earned himself a gift worthy of the gods. As preparations were made, one of Asgard's mightiest warriors, Lady Sif, found herself drawn to Beta Ray Bill, despite his alien appearance. And soon after, Bill, Sif, Odin and Thor all traveled to Nadavalir, the home of the dwarves who forged Mjolnir in the heart of a dying star. There, Atri, the king of the dwarves, was tasked with forging yet another hammer out of the same mystical metal. The Uru was smelted into shape, and this new weapon was granted enchantments almost identical to that of mighty Mjolnir. And thus was born the weapon Stormbreaker, which conferred upon Beta Ray Bill the powers of a Thunder God once more. Hammers in hand, Thor and Bill became Oath Brothers. The two thunderous warriors, along with Lady Sif, then boarded Thor's mystical space-faring chariot to confront the demons pursuing the Corbinite fleet. Upon finding that one ship had already been destroyed, Sif defended the remaining vessels while Thor and Bill traced the demons to their source. Fortunately, Scuttlebutt had completed her self-repair and arrived to fight alongside Lady Sif. Meanwhile, Thor and Bill discovered where the demons were coming from, an enormous portal in the center of the burning galaxy. They found themselves unable to enter the blazing gateway to confront their foe at its source, but by using the combined might of Mjolnir and Stormbreaker, Bill and Thor were able to destroy the portal and cut the demons off from their realm. Fortunately, this caused the demonic horde to disappear before they could overrun Sif and Scuttlebutt. The Corbinite fleet was safe once more. 
After this, while it was Bill's duty to return to his position and guide his people to their new home, he found himself not wanting to leave Asgard. Among the Asgardians, he had found fellowship and acceptance, but despite all he had sacrificed, his own people would avert their gaze as if he was a misshapen monster. Knowing of Bill's sacrifice, wise Odin conferred one more gift upon him by altering and transferring one enchantment from Mjolnir on to Stormbreaker. Henceforth, when Beta Ray Bill struck his enchanted hammer upon the ground, it would become disguised as a simple walking cane, and Bill would be transformed back into the Corbinite he was before he sacrificed his life and body to shepherd his people across the stars. Furthermore, Lady Sif volunteered to accompany Bill on his journey, and the two were sent back to Scuttlebutt to find and establish a new planet Corbin. However, a short time after this, Surtur completed the Sword of Doom and attacked Earth, seeking the Rainbow Bridge to Asgard. Bill and Sif were summoned once more to aid in the fight against this grave threat. Beta Ray Bill led the charge in Earth's defense against the demons of Muspelheim. Meanwhile, Thor and Odin fought to defend Asgard against the fire giant himself. Although the cost was great, this battle too was won, albeit with Odin seemingly sacrificing himself to stop Surtur. After this, Bill remained on Earth for a brief time, before returning to the fleet and guiding his people to a new planet Corbin. However, he would often be called away to assist Asgard or others during various crises. As a result, the Corbinites began to question Bill's priorities and his loyalty to their people. The Imperial Council demanded he forfeit Stormbreaker to them so that a new protector could be chosen. While Sif attempted to protest on his behalf, Bill's goals were never to achieve personal glory or power, and so he relinquished his enchanted weapon. While many attempted to lift the hammer, it soon became clear that none who tried were worthy of wielding Stormbreaker. And when his godly might was needed once more, Bill took up the hammer and reclaimed the power that was rightfully his. He continued his cosmic adventures, often fighting alongside other spacefaring heroes in the battle against evil. Some Corbinites grew to respect and revere Beta Ray Bill during this time, and a small religion began to develop around him. Then one day, Surtur returned to Asgard. Armed with the Twilight Sword forged from the Burning Galaxy, Surtur had come to bring about Ragnarok, the prophesied death of the Norse gods. Beta Ray Bill came to fight in Asgard's defense, but it soon became clear that this was a battle not even he could win. And so Thor had his oath brother whisked away to safety so that the memory of Asgard could survive within him. Meanwhile, the Corbinites realized that their own prophecy of destruction might soon come to pass when Ashta, the monstrous planet-eater of Corbinite legend, was observed approaching new Corbin. To safeguard their species against total extinction, many Corbinites had their spirits transferred into a device called the Meta Orb. Others were drafted into the military to face this threat head on. And so, when Beta Ray Bill returned home, his world was already under attack. And he learned that Ashta was simply another form of the world eater Galactus. The Alpha Ray, the prototype which predated the creation of Beta Ray Bill's cyborg body, was also dispatched to confront Galactus. However, the Corbinite priests, feeling threatened by the religion developing around Bill and Stormbreaker, had already reprogrammed the Alpha Ray to destroy Beta Ray Bill. Beset by enemies from all sides, Bill was unable to prevent the destruction of New Corbin. Their fleet was decimated, the Alpha Ray was struck down, and the Meta Orb containing the souls of the surviving Corbinites fell into the grasp of Galactus's new herald, Stardust. 
Of course, Beta Ray Bill met this foe head on in an attempt to reclaim the Meta Orb. In their rage and hubris, Stardust opened a portal to a cosmic hell where alien demons were exiled in an attempt to trap Bill inside. Bill avoided banishment to this dark dimension, but while the door was open, something else escaped. An immensely destructive entity known as Astaroth. Since this new enemy was a threat to the balance of the entire universe, Bill and Stardust were forced to fight side by side against it. This battle ended when Galactus re-energized the Alpha Ray and sent it to drag Astaroth into a nearby black hole. Having claimed the Meta Orb, Bill boarded Scuttlebutt and returned to Asgard, hoping to settle his people in whatever was left. However, what he found was a flaming wreckage devoid of life. Furthermore, before Astaroth was cast into the black hole, she was able to infuse some of her essence into the Meta Orb. This demonic energy fed on the spirits of many Corbinites within the orb, and from it, a new threat emerged, the Omega Ray. Since Surtur had also perished in the destruction of Asgard, the Omega Ray attempted to wield the broken remains of the Twilight Sword against Beta Ray Bill, but Bill struck with Stormbreaker, shattering the remnants of the giant weapon. Then, with thunder and fury, Bill rained down a flurry of blows, destroying his demonic opponent. However, in the aftermath of the fight, Bill's cyborg body was left badly damaged. He was dying, and having lost his people and his purpose, he was ready. But then, the Meta Orb flickered to life, and Bill knew there were survivors. Amidst the chaos and destruction, a glowing figure in a white robe appeared and seized the Meta Orb. The identity of this figure, and the ultimate fate of the remaining Corbinite souls within the Meta Orb are, as of yet, unrevealed. However, before departing, this mysterious figure gave Bill a new lease on life by transferring his spirit into another body, that of a recently deceased army veteran named Simon Walters. And as Walters, Bill soon discovered that by striking his fist against a surface, he could summon Stormbreaker and regain his Beta Ray form. Bill did not keep his human guise forever, though. Sometime after this, because of the actions of the villainous Wrecking Crew, an army of demons was unleashed on Earth. The same demons that had once pursued the Corbinite fleet across the burning galaxy. Beta Ray Bill teamed up with the Canadian super team Omega Flight to battle the invading force, ultimately leading them into a portal to another dimension, trapping himself inside along with his demonic foes. However, Bill later returned in his original Corbinite form, somehow having escaped his extra-dimensional exile. It is not currently known how this was accomplished, but whichever method was used for Bill to seemingly return to his original body must have left him vulnerable, for soon after he was captured and held prisoner by the shape-shifting aliens known as the Skrulls. Meanwhile, in the intervening time, Thor had returned to life by again joining his spirit to that of Donald Blake. Using the Odin power he inherited from his father, Thor recreated the capital city of Asgard on Earth, and resurrected the other Asgardians. Meanwhile, the Skrulls sought to conquer the Earth, but saw the Asgardians as a threat, and so after separating him from his enchanted hammer, they dropped a weakened bill onto Asgard to deliver a warning. Leave Earth or die. Some Asgardians were distrustful, fearing that Bill may be a Skrull imposter himself, but Thor assuaged their fears by tossing Mjolnir to his Oath Brother, allowing him to wield it and regain his Beta Ray Thor form. With Mjolnir in his grasp once more, Beta Ray Bill defended Asgard against the Skrull invasion force. 
Then came one of their mightiest warriors, a Super Skrull, one genetically modified to be capable of wielding a weapon made from the desecrated halves of a bisected Stormbreaker. This Super Skrull proved to be too powerful for Bill to handle alone, but Thor reclaimed Mjolnir and joined the fight as well. In the end, Stormbreaker was returned to its proper form and its rightful owner, as Bill and Thor stood side by side as brothers once more. After this, Bill reunited with Scuttlebutt and returned to the Stars to embark on a new quest. Perhaps it was for justice, or perhaps vengeance. In either case, Beta Ray Bill had one task left to accomplish. To kill Galactus. His plan was simple. If Galactus needed to consume entire worlds in order to survive, then Bill would destroy any planet he attempted to feed on. Beta Ray Bill intended to starve a god. So determined was Bill that he blackmailed the inhabitants of the World Eater's next target, infecting them with an artificially created disease and holding the cure ransom until they evacuated the planet so that he could destroy it. While he believed his intentions were noble, he soon found that his heinous actions had left him unworthy and unable to wield Stormbreaker. Furthermore, while his plan was working, the Silver Surfer informed Bill that if Galactus were to die, the resulting devastation would kill everything within 42 light years. With trillions of lives on the line, Bill was horrified to find himself needing to save a weakened Galactus from the very people he'd blackmailed. Without Stormbreaker to bolster his power, Bill removed all the safeties from his power source, utilizing the full power of the reactors that powered his cyborg body to protect Galactus while he fed. With his strength restored, Galactus then easily dispatched his attackers. Bill was then nearly destroyed by his own unstable power core, but the World Eater deigned to prevent this, stabilizing his condition. Galactus then asked Beta Ray Bill one question. Why? Bill explained that he was the last of his kind, and that he had failed in protecting them. But despite having nothing left, revenge was not worth the lives of so many others. So much death was an ill-fitting legacy for the Corbinites. Galactus understood, for unknown to Bill, the World Eater was also the last of his kind, the only survivor of a dead universe. He informed Bill that he was not, in fact, the last Corbinite for others yet lived somewhere in the universe, presumably within the Meta Orb. Before departing, Galactus left Bill with a gift, a companion to join him on his journey, a female Corbinite named T. Asha Ra. After boarding Scuttlebutt and repairing his body, Bill intended to return Stormbreaker to Asgard, as he was no longer worthy of its power. However, T. Asha Ra insisted that he try again. Sure enough, his sacrifice and bravery had once again proven him worthy of the enchanted weapon. And so, with his companion by his side, with Stormbreaker in his hand, and with Scuttlebutt at his command, Beta Ray Bill set forth into the universe to find a new purpose. And that, my friends, is the story of Beta Ray Bill. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next. And as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!